My fellow Americans, Passover and Easter are festivals of hope. That's why this weekend is a good time for all of us to reflect on the enduring importance to mankind of hope and faith in the future. And nowhere do our hopes take more visible form than in the quests of science. Science has grown, and with it, the fascination it holds for all of us. But as the pursuit of science has become ever more nationally and even multinationally funded, it has also become more expensive. The problem here is that science, unlike a bridge or an interstate highway or a courthouse, has no local constituency. Today, when we're witnessing some of the most exciting discoveries in the history of science, things similar to the breakthroughs associated with Einstein, Galileo, and Newton, Federal funding for science is in jeopardy because of budget constraints. That's why it's my duty as president to draw its importance to your attention and that of Congress. America has long been the world's scientific leader. Over the years, we've secured far more patents than any other country in the world. And since World War II, we have won more Nobel Prizes for science than the Europeans and Japanese combined. We also support more of what is called basic research, that is, research meant to teach us rather than to invent or develop new products. And for the past 40 years, the government has been our leading sponsor of basic research. The remarkable thing is that although basic research does not begin with a particular practical goal, when you look at the results over the years, it ends up being one of the most practical things government does. For example, government-sponsored basic research produced the first laser. Today, less than three decades later, Lasers are used in everything from microsurgery to the transmission of immense volumes of information and may contribute to our strategic defense initiative that promises to make ballistic missiles obsolete. Or think that over the past 50 years, the government has helped build a number of particle accelerators so scientists could study high-energy physics. Major industries, including television, communications, and computer industries, couldn't be where they are today without developments that began with this basic research. We cannot know where scientific research will lead. The consequences and spin-offs are unknown and unknowable until they happen. In research, as Albert Einstein once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. We can travel wherever the eye of our imagination can see, but one thing is certain. If we don't explore, others will, and we'll fall behind. This is why I've urged Congress to devote more money to research. After taking out inflation, today's government research expenditures are 58% greater than the expenditures of a decade ago. It is an indispensable investment in America's future. Let me tell you about just a few of the many projects we'll fund this year. This year, we'll begin work on the great-grandchild of those particle accelerators that have sent, meant so much to our economic growth. It's called the Superconducting Super Collider, and it will harness the galloping technology of superconductivity so we can explore subatomic particles in ways we've never been able to before. We'll also continue developing the space station. When it's in orbit, the space station will let us perform once impossible experiments in the weightless and sterile environment of outer space and understand our world and universe better. And we're developing new technology to allow man eventually to journey beyond Earth's orbit. Astronaut Senator Jake Garn and others in Congress have given the space program the support it needs to once again reach for the stars. Meanwhile, back on Earth, we will be pursuing breakthroughs in biotechnology that promise to revolutionize medicine, agriculture, and protection of the environment. We're working on new ways to spread the seeds of federal research, Working with universities across the country, we have established 14 engineering research centers devoted to basic research on emerging technologies. And we're planning 10 to 15 new science and technology centers to do the same thing in the fields of general science. All of these centers will work with industry so that what they discover can quickly lead to new and better and internationally competitive products. All of this and more is before Congress now. Some say that we can't afford it, that we're too strapped for cash. Well, leadership means making hard choices, even in an election year. We've put our research budget under a microscope and looked for quality and cost effectiveness. We put together the best program for the taxpayer's dollar. After all, the American tradition of hope is one we can't afford to forget.
Until next week, happy Easter and Passover. God bless you. Cut. Five seconds over. Over five seconds? Bar. Oh, golly. Well, that's my hard damn Buck Owens watch. I can't see the hand. The seconds I do with my other. I make that watch. They were rolling. Did you switch to camera, Mike? Please join your husband. You'll stand right there, sir. You want some police over there? Send it. You want to stand right here? Mr. Right. Right. President, it's always not a realistic, valuable member of the United States Navy. And Petty Officer Caruso has made an outstanding contribution over the few years that he's been on active duty with us. It's a pleasure for me to be able to, re to reintroduce him to the Navy because uh, we look at it as an honor to be selected to do this. It's up to the Petty Officer to select the individual he wants to have it with us. So it's my honor today to be able to provide that service for Petty Officer Crusoe. If I can have the military members please come to attention. You can raise your right hand, Petty Officer Crusoe, repeat after me. I, and state your full name. I, Stephen Monroe Caruso. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the officers appointed over me. And the officers appointed over me. According to. According to regulations, regulations, and the Uniform Code of Military Justice, and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now we're taking care of that little bit of business. We have to sign some papers, Mr. President. Would you join me over here, sir? Thank you. Just above mine, on each one of these pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. That's where you meant it, don't you? Were yes, sir. No, sir, that's just fine, sir. important one because that's his contract with you, sir. All right. Just right up here, sir. Just for it. Thank you, sir. Right. Put out some Caruso. It's now your turn. And remember, your full name. No half names, no middle initials. Right here where you can hardly see the writing. Ah. Just below the real fine print. So, so now the one thing we did. One thing about it, I can't re-enlist. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing we didn't tell Petty Officer Crusoe is that this is his honorable discharge papers as of, but it's effective as of April Fool's Day on the first of April. So he's been off of active duty for the last day or so, and he didn't really know, Mr. President. Know him. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> we always give that to him after he signs up again, <laughs> sir. If you would, Petty Officer Crusoe, Cindy, would you join the present? Maybe you can. Make a stab at this piece of tape here. And uh, I just make a symbolic cut or a starting cut. Yes, sir, if you will, sir. Just hard enough for it for them to be. Fantastic. Yes, sir, and that wasn't a cavalry scene. Yes, sir. It's a pretty much ceremonial. Would you like to uh, cut again and uh, yes, offer the presence of tape? 
Huh? Watch the horse, I don't think it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> Plates and the knives and forks are in the tack point. One small so piece of energy before you go. Through, so you'll be holding it in your hand. <laughs> I think you ought to be up in this picture too. Thank you. Just one small piece for that <laughs> riding energy <laughs> that you're going to need all afternoon. A little dessert for breakfast. Cut yourself from this regular piece of paper to take down with your ride. That'll be fun. And who's got this? Oh, yeah. We have a spatula, Steve. Oh, yeah. Let's <laughs> use the spatula. This sword is a... Cut a small, a large one. Another one for Nancy. If we do that, then the spatula will fit in both of them. Give you some jelly beans, sir. You can save the big one. Thank you. Oh, excuse my fingers. Oh, now you have fingerprints. <laughs> okay. Would you like to have it? In my hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. In fact, I'll even give you taking a bath. Oh, there you go. Mmm. <laughs> Breakfast. You're all going to enjoy this. <laughs> Thank you for your time this morning. Well, my pleasure, and I'm honored to be a small part of all of this. <laughs>